What it do, y'all? Hey, hey guys, welcome back. Well, not welcome back. Welcome to our family our first channel, the family first channel video. video. What we gonna call the fam? The Hearts fam? We just call them the fam? The cousins. Y'all the heart All right, cousins. Y'all the heart cousins. Yeah. Welcome to our channel, the heart cousins. Yeah. I am Kia Tatiana. I also have a YouTube channel, Kia Tatiana. Link will be in the description box. And this is my husband. Mr. Marcus, Uncle yeah, Marcus, Auntie Kia, however yeah, y'all wanna call it. Just big cut. Big cuz. Okay, big sis, however y'all wanna say it. Mm -hmm. We're here and we're glad to and honored to really be sitting here in front of you guys and just giving you guys wisdom, um, answer you guys questions truthfully. I transition into marriage. Brief overview if you are new here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys are probably coming to our channel new here, but if you didn't know, we met, dated, Engaged, married, in four months. <laughs> in four Bold. months. So, this is a uh, God story. So, if you're interested in these kind of videos, then please stay tuned. This channel is going to be surrounded around faith, family, lifestyle, and raising our family in Christ. So, yeah. and. It's gonna be a lot of transparency here. Mm -hmm. Like we're here to give wisdom, but you're gonna see a lot of growing from us, a lot of transparency, a lot of you know, growing. Sometimes mm -hmm. growing hurts. So, you know, what we're here to do is be transparent yes, sir. and just, you know, have a continual testimony video testimonial of how we're making it, how we're getting by by God's grace. By so, the grace of God to our so yeah. I have a few different questions here so, from Instagram, from yeah. YouTube, and I'm gonna start with the questions. I guess what we can do is like bounce off the questions. Yeah, I'm gonna have oh, <laughs> well, you I guys, got you of, guys ask me a lot of questions. So the first question is from my great sister Anasia. I love you so much. She asks, "How did the conversation go with expressing past slash current struggles?" slash weaknesses do you want to answer yeah i will okay. um the first i think it was the very first conversation that we had i didn't just spill all my beans but i told her one thing that you're going to get from me is transparency um a lot of openness because you know the way i got free was learning how to do that so you know, for me, I just, I didn't want to jump in anything without the person knowing who I was exactly. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, for the most part, it was well, like, because of the type of woman she is, you yeah. know, there were a couple of conversations where, you know, it wasn't easy and, you know, there were tears, but for the most part, I was just straight up, like, <laughs> I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. So at least on my part, sharing I'm pretty much an open book I would say to a certain extent um, I don't mind sharing testimonials type of um, experiences and I also feel like you can tell me if I was wrong but I also kind of feel like I was pretty open as to what I went through and things that I've struggled with um, but obviously certain things it gradually came out it wasn't just right. our first we conversation wasn't just like, yeah. to me that's weird like to you know what i'm saying yeah. you grow you grow and get to know each other so you know per the depth of our conversation and time different things came out the next one is <laughs> how long did you pray for each other before you actually met and that's from charlisa hey charlisa um how long we pray for each other before for, we met before we met so oh, you for me? I'm about to answer that. So <laughs> back in 2020, um, when the Lord told me that I was moving, which was around like November, December ish, early December ish, and the Lord told me that I was moving, and He told me that in the upcoming two years that I would be married. And prior to this, I was not praying for my future husband at all. I had just got a relationship. I did not care about nothing when it came to getting into relationship again. That wasn't my focus and quite frankly like I needed some I needed healing in order before I can even pray or even think about praying for my husband. I needed to pray for myself. 
and sit in the feet sit at the feet of God and allow him to refine me so it wasn't like I was praying diligently like for a year straight or anything like that what I would say is even when I came to Christ though I was very intentional that whoever I was going to marry I was constantly praying for his parents for his family members for his situation like but I didn't necessarily was praying at that moment for those things if that makes sense but hopefully that answers the question I told her like I let her see maybe like after we got engaged, I let her see something that I had wrote down in my journal mm -hmm. um, that was pretty much a prayer, like from time to time. He wrote a prayer about me, y'all. I did, and it's crazy how... Get you a man that's going to write prayers about you before he even knew you. Yeah, it was accurate. Like, you know, God just placed it on my spirit to to write. At moments, he tells me to write things down. Um, I ain't going to say I'm a poet or nothing, but when the inspiration is there, you know, God literally writes things and everything that I wrote and prayed for is what she is so <laughs> you know yeah. God it was it was God but it was sporadic it wasn't one of those things where I was just you know wake up thank you Lord for life and thank you Lord for my future wife no I wouldn't I wasn't praying like that right <laughs> Sam down there in the south you feel me what's up um, so her first question was what was something that was stressful for you guys during wedding planning? <laughs> um, there was a lot of things that was stressful. Ooh. Just to keep it short, um, they, we were having a bridal party and then we ended up not having a bridal party in short. Yeah. So that was something that kind of caused a lot of, I don't want to say stress, but it pretty much caused a little bit, yeah. a little bit of a burden. The, in the gist, as crazy as it is, the gist was us. Yeah. Like, you know, we we found ourselves trying to people please and we got all, you know, the idea of ceremony, the marriage was us, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We're we're the ones that have to live after marriage. Together. And, yeah, together and you know, most of our stress came from us trying to have something big drawn out yeah and having it for others and not just focusing on each other the next question was from her how did you guys stay faithful during the wait until marriage <laughs> jesus jesus literally <laughs> jesus so it was hard it was hard for yeah. many different reasons and um thank you jesus that it was really only by his grace that we made it through and i'm um, transparently speaking because i feel like transparency we is, be transparent. is it um we've cut it by threats so many yeah. so many times so many stupid times yeah. cut it by threads but you know so thank you thank you lord yeah we, God we made it grace. seriously like we made it but it wasn't easy um mm -hmm. it wasn't easy that at all Especially because we knew that we knew that we knew and it was something that was already set in stone We already had a wedding date like we were with each other all the time <laughs> I was just like you already my wife I might yeah, have like, get So like up. yeah, so like sometimes like I had it in my head that he was already my husband right. Even though he wasn't I didn't sometimes I didn't even think of like you can't do this. You're not married yeah. It was just like oh, this is already my husband, you know, so yeah. Um, but we still chose to honor God sometimes. And we did honor God. We did. As close as we were. Yeah. We always said this isn't. Yeah. We won't we won't allow our purpose to yeah. be destroyed. Uh the last one was how did you know it was time to get married? Propose while dating. Just God, like leadership to me means everything. So before I even before I even went out on a date with her, I was already talking about leadership. You don't you don't get an answer solely from man but you know of course i took it to god but god my answer that i was getting from him plus what my leadership was saying they gave me the okay yeah all right next question um what has been so this is from my sister maggie what up maggie can Man. we see your wedding sis what up, babe? um she said what has been the hardest part with adjusting into marriage i can share first and i would i won't say there's a hard part um, <laughs> but what I will say is 
there can be difficulties now to keep in mind that I can't just make decisions on my own as I used to when I was single. So there's instances where I want to make moves, not just physical moves, but like financial moves and like doing things in that area that I know that I have to consult him now. But sometimes I think about it and I'm like, oh wait, I can't just do this. Like I can't just want to, you know, do whatever I want. I have to now submit to my husband mm, that's and word. see what he Sheesh. says and what he thinks about it. So mm. I won't say it's difficult, um, but I will say it's different. Alright, so I'm going to say this. My food don't be ready when I get home sometime. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously, like, it's, it's, I wouldn't even say it's different, like, because we mesh so well. Yeah. Like, we just, not to say we, we don't have any arguments or anything. Like, mm -hmm. everything's not always peachy keen. But yeah. We mesh so well, and we're able to, if I have, if we have a disagreement, we keep it at a disagreement and we just move on about our business. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, nothing really has been an issue as far as meshing together Yeah. or being one. Nope. She says, what do you look for in a godly man? And then for you, what do you look for in a godly woman? My answer might sound really short, but it's a godly man. Not just someone who carries, not just someone who carries the title of a godly man. But someone who lives it out who lives a life of worship and is evident like the fruits speak for itself like you don't need to say much more so mm -hmm. everything else falls underneath it everything was about purpose like mm -hmm. does do i see destiny being fulfilled with her do i see her living a certain lifestyle is she you know does she know her identity in christ and her worth and for me like I didn't even have to ask. Like, I just seen it. I seen how she was moving, how she was living. Man, that was it for me. First part of this is, how long did you know you wanted to marry Kia? When we get, when we get engaged? In April? I got engaged April 18th. April 18th. Literally, and I told her, it was a, it was a couple incidents, but the moment I knew, um, I was in my old apartment and I told her that my oven broke. <laughs> I told her that my oven broke and I didn't ask her to do anything, but she came to my job and she brought like a week's worth of food that she had cooked and prepared. And she did it just because she wanted to. Yeah. And like, she she's shown so much love throughout us like talking courting engagement but like that was that was the icing on the cake for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right what are y'all careers how do they fit into your married life routine great question and that's from yvonne hey girl happy belated birthday um i guess i can start first and i'll say my career is full-time entrepreneur, content creator, so I work from home, and my husband does. I am an on-site supervisor, manager, um, slash recruiter, so... Slash entrepreneur. Slash entrepreneur. What I do physically, <laughs> nothing to do with our, with our purpose, but... However, know. he's now walking in that. Yeah, so... What she's doing now is something that I truly was sitting dormant on. Um, you know, being being a procrastinator, being a being lazy about it. Like our our goal for the most part is the exact same thing. It's she's doing it, and I'm stepping into it now. Yeah. So, um, how does it fit into our marriage? I actually just made a post about that yesterday, and I was asking other wives who either recently became a wife or an entrepreneur or in general like how do they navigate um, their business and entrepreneurship slash regular work now with the marriage being that you want to create a healthy balance so one thing I don't want to fully answer this to say like I have a set routine because it's only about to be two weeks yeah. so, and we only been home for one week so 
it's not really much I can say there but what I can say is I've been very intentional that when he's at work all day long because he's at work from like the crack of dawn to by the time it get dark outside and I'm home all day working on my business spending time with God like doing all these things so I'm very intentional with the 10 hours that I'm home by myself that I'm getting these things done out the way and even if I have to do some things that trickles over when he comes I'm understanding. I'll, he's understanding and I'll still make sure that I still acknowledge him still set apart that time to have with him and then you know then let him know like I still have a little bit more stuff to do so overall I try not to because I think that this is kind of like mainly focused to me because he can't bring homework he don't bring work home and I will not <laughs> So it's almost like I I have told him that I won't come into bed and do work like when I get into bed it's time for us and spending time with each other. So you know something I'm still navigating. I guess I can answer that again in the next six months prayerfully. Mm -hmm. um, it stays this way and just gets better. Right. Um, that was a good question. Though. That was a great question. How's it like being married? <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah. It's blissful. Yeah. Um, it's we a blessing. Yeah, it's a it's a blessing having somebody that submitted to Christ. And like we're not the exact same person, but we just we really do mesh well. Yeah. Like we both goofy. We both We literally would like stand in the living room like we did today and just dance. Yeah, like, we started dancing. Playing. Yeah. We had a whole routine of yeah, just and we do that often. Us like, vibing, just yeah. Have like, music playing. And it'll be instrumental, so not just like <laughs> lyric videos. Like, we just start like dancing like everybody's watching us. Yeah. So. Like we in like a, a dancing thing. with the stars. stars or yeah, something. like that type of dancing. Um but yeah, what was the question again? How's what it like being married? It's fun. Like man It's like the obvious <laughs> <laughs> become one. <laughs> amazing being yeah. able to be home all day because before I was still living by myself but before I'm home alone all the time but knowing that at a certain time my best friend is coming home we about to turn up on these streets all right so Nita she asked um, how did you know you were ready for marriage a godly marriage and knowing she means mentally and spiritually great question yeah. uh, quickly last year during quarantine God took me through this huge like it felt I believe it was almost like nine months long and now that I think about it that's how that's how long a woman's pregnancy is. hey whoo, it gotta, was an extremely long time where God truly was forming me all over mm. again wow. and then creating me refining me uh, just just so much the entire quarantine literally like it was that entire time it even dragged out a little bit took when quarantine was over but during that time was a time I was actually speaking to someone the other day and I was telling them that um, my preparation for marriage wasn't just like God I'm ready to be a wife or God saying okay daughter you're ready to be a wife but it started as let me just say I'm a person I was a person who was very much so spoiled. I'm the youngest of four kids being that there was a lot of things that I didn't have to do in the house. Even though like they would say I have to do it, I just didn't do it because I know that they're going to do it anyways. I had other siblings and I had parents to do it for myself. That being said, I was a very lazy person. I didn't wake up early. I, if anybody knew in my family that one thing he was going to do is sleep and I could sleep to about 1 2 p.m. and it's like that all the time it was like that all the time and it was something that it never seemed like I could ever break out of because I just love I still love my sleep so much but it just didn't seem like it was something that I could ever break out of and then until one day during quarantine I woke me up at like 7 30 and I'm like and I, it was like I wasn't tired at all after that I'm like what I'm like, God, help me to go back to sleep. I kept saying that. God, help me to go back to sleep. But it was like the more energy was coming up. And he's like, go clean the bathroom. I'm like, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, mind you, first of all, even getting my apartment was a time, a very intentional time where God 
taught me what it means to be a homemaker and cleaning up after my own home and I believe God intentionally set me a part of my family's household I wasn't growing there spiritually because I was just covered a lot so in my own household he was teaching me how to obviously I had to do it otherwise I'm gonna have mold and so I had to do these things but he was teaching me what it means to be intentional and, and he didn't start off by saying I'm preparing you to be a wife so you got to do this it was just something that started to happen and it just gradually just started to grow into now I love to make sure my house is tidy I love to make sure there's nothing on the floor I love to make sure I have the counselors cleaned up those are things that happen over time and truth be told like I could wake up by myself without an alarm at 8 o'clock in the morning now like that's something that has never happened before so how to be a homemaker and take care of my home and prepare at home for my family I know that was a long answer but ladies y'all need a y'all need if you think that you're ready to be a wife I would challenge you to ask yourself in what ways are you contributing to your home whether it's your home with your parents or the home by yourself. The next one is, did you guys face criticism for getting married in a short period of time? No. And I, well, a little bit, yeah. but I'll tell you, it wasn't a lot only because we ain't, we ain't allow people in our business That's like right. that. And that was, man, when I tell you that was peaceful, like just popping up engaged. Yeah. If, you, if you're new to our channel, just let y'all know that the entire time we dated and we were engaged nobody knew it was social, social media, media. it was just our leaders only oh, yeah. and leaders then really as time close, went on it was close friends really like close before friends. that it was nobody and we didn't even announce our engagement to like two weeks later i believe yeah on um, for social media for social media yeah yeah that that alone made it so peaceful um but you know we had a little bit yeah just a little bit but yeah you know, it's all good. We were very intentional with the people who we told also. Right. Not just anyone that we were acquainted with, um, we were telling. Yeah. Just more so for the covering of our marriage and understanding that this is bigger than... Bigger than what? Bigger than just a social media right. thing. Future wisdom for those um, about to make that step. Don't let people in your business, man. Like, seriously, just enjoy being with your person and pop up man don't even pop up engaged pop up married on them you know what i'm saying like you'll you'll have so much peace if you do it that way yep what advice will we give couples in the courting season the one that i just said don't let people in your business Keep and it covered um, in prayer yeah cover it cover it in prayer um pray together like whether it be on the phone during the day don't do it at night because it's still dangerous yeah <laughs> but uh pray with each other like have have people that you trust as far as leaders that won't take one side um unbiased. That'll see, yeah unbiased opinions have somebody that'll lead you in the right direction yeah um, a community is something very accountability. important yeah accountability it's I had brothers like on my neck, like you better not be slipping up out here. And you know, that's, I'm thankful for that because they yeah. really truly helped me along with my leader. So, you know, just a community of people that you really trust mutually and that'll lead you to the cross and, you know, not just take your, your side because it being you. Great answer, babe. <laughs> What's one thing that you are looking forward to now that you are married? Traveling, traveling. Yeah as a couple with our family um couple trips and just traveling like yeah. we love to travel. traveling having making a home together yeah making a home together mm -hmm. and um building a home together like for our first time not just a building a physical home but even getting our first home together and all of these great things that yeah, come there's with so many growing. things yeah. so many things that we just look forward to yeah. yep and the last one is what were your expectations of marriage versus the reality uh i would say that he's always there 
and that it's not a bad thing. I already said that I love him being always there. If I'm in the bathroom, this is oh, in please. the bathroom. But I will even I'm say vice versa. I'm gonna even say like vice versa. <laughs> like I do the same thing to him. Yes. Too. So thank you. She'll come. I think that Can we're. Can I say that? Yeah. No. Uh, as much space as I don't want her to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my this is the end of our Q&A we hope that you enjoyed it we hope that this was informative we hope that you were blessed by it we hope that you we pray that you even see that there it is a possibility to have a relationship and have a godly marriage and with Christ in the center even if you're single or if you're dating and you're dating not in Christ um, it's still possible it's still available for you to yeah. submit yourself to Christ and then the rest will follow. So our only mission and our goal is with everything that we do with our lives is to point you guys back to the cross and Christ. to know that we only got here because of him. Solely. And it's something that we have to continue acknowledging that it's only by his grace only that we're, his grace. we're able to say like, we've married. Yeah. Seriously though, like on a real note, man, um, you know, you just submitting to Christ and like you being patient and waiting. Mm -hmm. like, God will reward, blow your yeah, mind. He He'll will literally blow your reward mind. you for it. And I also told somebody real quick, sorry, babe. Mm -hmm. I recently told somebody because she um, actually said that um, she needs it. She wanted advice for someone who is waiting um, to find their husband, is trusting God. For her husband and while that can be a great thing because we trust god with everything else we trust that he honors our desires of our hearts and in his perfect timing will he bring forth that but it can be very dangerous when we only seek god and trust god for things that we want or just for a, a end result to it and yes. that's not god like, seek god instead of instead of seeking god for your spouse yeah seek, seek god for him seek god for him and to yeah. get yourself straightened out yeah like you know what i'm saying get yourself and i told her prepared. like in this season like in the single season is a great time to prepare and not just like prepare for just you getting ready for a spouse but like preparing into the woman the man that god has called you to be right. walking diligently and in purpose or discovering your purpose and one more thing sorry a lot of people say that they they want god to prepare them for marriage or they waiting for their person but yet they have no understanding of what marriage is nor they are prepared for it in an aspect of what it means to serve one another when you're married it's bigger than just i love you and we love each other so much that we're getting married that we understand that um, some days it's gonna feel like this dude got on my last nerve. Like, when day? What days? I said some days oh, it's gonna feel gonna... like this dude get on my last nerves and love is not enough to hold up a uh, marriage. So Yeah. Yep. What so she said. we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another video. We pray that this you know all that i said before if you're new to this channel which more than likely you possibly are welcome to the family it's, it's the hearts. Hearts. and we'll see you in our next video peace don't forget to hit the like comment subscribe all of that great stuff let us know in the comment section what else you like to see and we out bye y'all